Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube channel of Conscious History, where we will unveil the hidden truths of the past. In times of human history, there are those individuals who possess a unique and extraordinary skill, the art of cunning. Their power lies not in their physical strength or charisma, but in their ability to manipulate and persuade people. People who have the ability to influence and shape outcomes without ever revealing one's true intention. Among these people, one name stands out as a master of political intrigue and espionage. Joseph Fouché, Napoleon's Bonaparte's Minister of Police. In this video, we will guide you through the mind of a master manipulator. If you like the content, like and subscribe to the channel and let's start the video. Joseph Fouché was born on 21st of May 1759 in Le Pellerin, a small village near Nantes, a harbour city in the west of France. Fouché excelled at the College of the Oratorians, otherwise known as Catholic priests. Fouché displayed great skill for literary and scientific studies. Wanting to become a teacher and because of his amazing learning capabilities, Fouché was sent to an institution in Paris. Here he made rapid progress and was soon appointed to tutorial duties at several colleges. At this time, he even had some encounters with Maximilien Robespierre and his sister Charlotte, both before and in the early days of the French Revolution. In October 1790, he was transferred by the priests to their college at Nantes, in an attempt to control his advocacy of revolutionary principles. However, here Fouché became even more of a democrat. His talents and anti-clericalism brought him into favor with the population of Nantes especially after he became a leading member of the local Jacobin club. When the College of the Priest dissolved in May of 1792, he immediately gave up on the church. His reason for this was that he never taken any major vows in the first place. A few months later, the Tuileries was stormed on the 10th of August, which meant the beginning of the downfall of the monarchy. Fouché was elected for the National Convention, which proclaimed the French Republic on the 22nd of September. Fouché's interests brought him into contact with the Girondists, and he became a Girondist himself. However, the lack of support for the trial and execution of King Louis XVI led him to join the Jacobins, the more radical ones, and was one of the deputies who voted for the immediate death of Louis XVI. The crisis that resulted from the declaration of war made Fouché famous as one of the Jacobin radicals holding power in Paris. In this period of time, Fouché earned himself a real reputation in crushing the revolt of the royalists. In 1793, the man who one year ago was an advocate of the role of the clergy in education, now helped the dechristianization movement, ransacking churches and sending their valuables to the treasury. It were events like this that gave him the nickname the Executioner of Lyon, but it was our duty to do so, for humanity's sake, as Fouché would call it himself. His cruel actions towards the aristocrats shocked Robespierre so much that he tried to expel Fouché from the Jacobin Club on July 1794. But of course our main character of this video was already plotting to overthrow Robespierre from behind the scenes while remaining hidden in Paris. This was because Robespierre was losing his influence and because Fouché was under the protection of Barat. Fouché ultimately survived Robespierre's final wave of purges. It was Fouché who engineered Robespierre's overthrow, leading up to the dramatic coup of the 9th Thermidor on the 28th July of 1794. Fouché worked at the overthrow with all his anger. When he woke up, he would run around till night calling on deputies of all shades of opinion saying to each and every one, you will die tomorrow, if he, meaning Robespierre, does not. Fouché embodied the merciless French politics of the Republic era. In 1795, he was even arrested, but the Royalist rebellion aborted his execution, and he was released. During the Directory government, he helped François Babeuf to get some more power, and surprisingly, Fouché is supposed to have betrayed Babeuf's plot of 1796, by telling it to director Paul Barat. In 1799, he became Minister of Police in Paris, where he closed the Jacobin Club in a Fouché type of way. 
hunting down the pamphleteers and editors, whether well Jacobins or royalists, who were influential critics of the government. This caused that when Napoleon Bonaparte came back from the Egyptian campaign, the ex-Jacobin was one of the most powerful men in France. Fouché knew the unpopularity of the directors. Fouché joined Bonaparte, who was plotting the directory's overthrow. His activity in the coup ensured him the favor on Bonaparte, who kept him in office. Fouché became Napoleon's minister of police, increasing centralization and efficiency in both Paris and other provinces. He became a master of espionage and intrigue, having an effective network of spies that played a crucial role in the stability of the Napoleonic regime. Fouché employed a system of double agents, individuals who pretended to be spies for other nations or groups while secretly working for him, encouraging rivalry and competition among his own spies and therefore rewarding them or punishing them. It was because of this spy network that the people who orchestrated the infernal machine assassination, where the plan was to detonate a bomb as Napoleon's carriage passed by, would be arrested and executed. Of course, Joseph Fouché was not above abusing his power as Minister of Police. He kept files not on just spies, descendants or people in power, but also on Napoleon himself. Fouché had his tentacles in everything, from false stories to having his spies infiltrate salons. His many intrigues worried Napoleon, and he was so intimidated by his Minister of Police that he did not dismiss the man personally, but instead he sent a servant. Fouché did get a piece of land, a yearly salary as a senator, and over a million francs from the reserve funds of the police. Fouché did become senator and took half of the reserve funds of the police, which he had accumulated. However, he continued to intrigue through his spies, who tended to have more information than that of the new minister of police. Because of his influence and cunningness, Fouché became head of the reconstituted ministry of police again, after the proclamation of the First French Empire. His police agents were brutal, which is the main reason for the absence of conspiracies after 1804. During the absence of Napoleon because of the Austrian campaign of 1809, the British Welcheren expedition threatened the safety of Antwerp. Fouché issued an order to the northern departments of the empire for the mobilization of 60,000 national guards. Adding to the order this statement, let us prove to Europe that although the genius of Napoleon can throw lustre on France, his presence is not necessary to enable us to repulse the enemy. Of course, the emperor was not pleased by this message and worried him deep inside. The next month brought further friction between the emperor and his minister of police. In 1809, Napoleon had desire for peace with the British and opened negotiations only to find that Fouché, because of his spies, knew and had forestalled him. His rage against his minister was extreme and on the 3rd of June 1810, he dismissed him from his office. However, Napoleon never completely disgraced the man who might again be useful, and Fouché received the governorship of the Rome department. Now let's talk about a classic Fouché action. The night before he was dismissed and a new minister of police was appointed, he took away all the crucial and sensitive pieces from the police archives. He removed documents and records that contained valuable information about political figures, espionage activities, and other matters of the state security. Napoleon did not stay mad with Fouché, because he was back in favor in 1812, and in 1814, Napoleon ordered Fouché to return. Another interesting fact is his rivalry with another key figure of the Napoleonic era, Talleyrand. Both men were ambitious and sought positions of influence and power, but both men did it in a completely different way. If you want to know more about the man we call the genius behind Napoleon, I highly recommend checking out our video of Talleyrand. But Fouché and Talleyrand were agreeing completely on one subject. They both attempted to advise Napoleon to not invade Russia. It's like some people knew exactly what to do during certain decision making, and if Napoleon had listened, the history would be completely different. When Napoleon was defeated and exiled to Elba, Fouché sent Napoleon a letter where he advised him for the peace of France to go to the United States. 
He also sent a letter to the new sovereign, Louis XVIII, in favor of liberty. With an unsatisfactory response, and seeing that there were no hopes of advancement, he entered into relations with conspirators who sought to overthrow the Bourbons. Napoleon dreaded Fouché, suspected him, even hated him, but thought he was necessary. He was one of those instruments that serve, but hang heavy on the hand that makes use of them, and destroys them when it wishes to get rid of them. Napoleon left Elba in 1815, which caused Louis XVIII to worry for his safety, and he offered Fouché a job as the Minister of Police. He refused, and for a third time, he began to serve Napoleon. Of course, the cunning Fouché was taking no chances with his future, secretly negotiating with an Austrian statesman and others just in case if Napoleon would fail. When he did, Fouché, who had once terrorized Bourbon supporters, now switched sides to serve the Bourbons, graciously accepting the position as Louis XVIII's Minister of Police. Fouché then initiated a campaign against any real or imaginary enemies of the Bourbons, including anyone who might attempt to return Napoleon to power. Even Tully Raw disapproved of such practices, including the execution of Marshal Michel Ney. Ironically, Fouché had voted for the death sentence in the trial of Louis XVI, so he belonged to the murderers of the king within the cabinet, and because of this, they could hardly tolerate him as a member of the government. Fouché's importance was fading, and in 1816, his services were deemed and no longer needed. He was degraded to the post of French ambassador in Saxony and later exiled. Before his death, a newspaper wrote a small article about him. Fouché looked only to himself. Fouché became a rich, important personage. But the price for this was abandoning his friends and signing the warrants for their deaths. He succeeded, as such persons usually do for a time. But at last he found himself alone in the wilderness he had created. He was the minister of Louis XVIII, but had been the judge of Louis XVI, and is now wandering over the face of the earth, perhaps less respected than any one of those who he had delivered to the vengeance of the court. Did you know about Napoleon's cunning minister of police? What did you think about his ability to persuade and manipulate people? Leave me your answers below in the comments, and if you like the content, Please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to see more in-depth history videos. And activate the notification bell so that YouTube will notify you once we upload a new video. We upload videos regularly. Don't miss them. See you next time at Conscious History.